All right, everybody, friends, family, crews, colleagues, siblings, dogs, you are listening to the Top 5 Podcast. And I'm your host, Chris McPeak, and I am joined, as almost always, by Annie Pruitt. Hello, Annie Pruitt. Hello, Sister Chris. Well, how are you on this fine evening? I'm, I'm doing quite well, actually. It is, it is good to see you, as always, and discuss our favorite thing, which is popular culture. Absolutely. And so what is our, what is our subject tonight? So tonight we are going to do our top five alien movies, but there's a catch. Yes, so you have rules. We have we have very strict rules for this particular category. Number one, there are no no DC or Marvel movies are allowed. No uh, comic book characters. No comic book characters. That you cannot use Superman. Technically, he's an alien, but. So we're not using any comic, at least DC Marvel, okay? Put it that way. Number two, Star Wars doesn't count because Star Wars is not originated from Earth. Even it's a galaxy far, far away. That Um, is also true. And then we're just making this, the entire Star Trek franchise like off limits just because it's, because it, because it's Star Trek. It's really, you know, though, yeah, those, I don't think, I never think alien when I think of those movies, even though there may be non-human characters i guess when i think what yeah so when i thought of alien movies i thought very specifically of earth and and not earth so yeah yeah human beings that live on earth connecting in some way with other beings that do not live on earth or not from earth like obviously one of our favorite aliens of all time has got to be spock but i mean that that just doesn't that that would not make that's not like for this list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's get get rolling. Okay. Hi, husband. I think we might get some a little drop in Hello. commentary here from the roommate. Okay. <laughs> the husband. All right. I, I'll go first. Okay. My number five is from 1984. It stars Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen, and it is called oh. Starman. And it it's it's been probably 30 years since I've even seen this movie, but Jeff Bridges got an Academy Award nomination for the film. It's very endearing and sweet because he is an alien, takes the form of a human being and connects with Karen Allen. And I think what I remember the most from that movie is the way that he figures out the traffic lights. Yes. So, go, green means go. go. Red, red means stop. Yellow, yellow means go, go very, very fast. And, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a endearing movie, funny Jeff Bridges is hot. I mean, what else do you need? So yeah. that's my number five. What happened? Well, and you're absolutely right about the endearing part because essentially, like he as, as this alien form, he really has no comprehension of like human love. Right. So by embodying, you know, the the husband or the dead husband of this woman, like he learns this thing about humankind, and that's that's what makes like that movie quite in, in like not just endearing, but it's right. like you know this guy can figure it out why can't like every other man anybody else figure it out (laughs) so true every other man oh she didn't mean man she meant human Uh so my number five i'm gonna go with this this was a hard list for me because like we're we're sci-fi horror geeks in this house oh yeah you Uh, are so i'm gonna go like a, a different a different direction so 1989 the abyss the you know under the sea alien oh yeah so Really, really cool. Ed Harris, but of course, and it's got one of my all-time favorite, Michael. Michael Bean. Bean. Love him. Love him. Love him. He's going to be at Comic Con this year. I have to meet him. Oh my uh, gosh! San Diego's uh, Comic Con. Kansas City has a Comic Con. Oh, okay. It's not like you know. It's it's like San Diego costs thousands of dollars. Like Kansas City, the tickets are like sixty bucks. Totally okay. different. There you go. Yeah. Welcome to Kansas City. Right. Um, <laughs> So, but the abyss, you know, you know, this whole, this, this deep sea, you know, adventure that they're on, what they're trying to, you know, discover, but there is, is, is beautiful and brilliant because I can watch mm-hmm. anything that man does. But Mary Elizabeth, how do you put it? Mastron? Mastro Antonio. I, I love her in it. And 
she's a badass, you know, yeah. that's one of the things I loved about her as an actress is like, you know, she doesn't need makeup. She, yeah. She's going to show screen to be a badass, but yeah. inevitably, you know, I'm not going to give away the ending, but you know, they discover basically this alien species, you know, way down in the deep, deep sea, yeah. down in the abyss. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool, but it's a different spin on an alien movie. That is a highly entertaining movie. And if I remember correctly, there was an a, a additional or a, a different version released on yeah. DVD or video or something, a director's special ending or with yeah. 39 extra minutes. Of, yeah. I'm actually not certain which, because I know I did not see this movie in the theater back in the day. I saw it on video, but I am not, I can't tell you specifically if I remember <laughs> when, which uh, version I saw. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But at number five. All right. My number four is a movie that we've talked about on the show before, I believe, was one of your daughter's top five scary movies of all time. Okay. I'm going with 2002 Signs, directed Ooh. by M. Night Shyamalan. And okay. let me tell you why I picked this movie. Okay. Okay. So the idea of the alien... I felt like for most of the movie, for six eighths of the movie, you've got this concept of an alien. You've got these crop circles. You've got yeah. these odd things happening in the neighborhood and at the house. But until this one part, you don't see <laughs> the creature. And I was totally fine with the whole thing of the creature just kind of popping up on TV and looking into the camera and going away. Yeah. And if they had just kept it that way, I'd have been fine. But it was the manifestation of the alien existing outside of the home and taking, you know, little Rory Culkin. And it yeah. just kind of, you know, it, it ruined it for me. But as an alien movie, six eighths of it, I think, are perfect because you get a chance to be afraid of something you don't understand that's not of this earth. And and that part I really appreciated about, about M. Night's storytelling and the way that he led us through the the fear and the unknown of it all and you know I was not familiar with the concept of crop circles ever before that but and it's got you know it's great performances it was Mel Gibson in a, in a better time Joaquin Phoenix be before he really became a big deal and yeah. I'm gonna say Abby Abigail Breslin like when she was still a little a little pumpkin movie and I remember too I want to say Cherry Thomas was the sheriff Terry and she, Jones. Terry yeah. Jones, wait, she eventually went on to be the president on 24 uh, yeah. of my, of my second favorite season of 24 season seven. Yeah. So that's my number four. I, 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 I approve. So it's funny <laughs> that is in David's favorites because like they watched it when they were very, very young without me, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with you kind of for the same reasons. It didn't make my list because like of that whole, like that last like I loved like the the significance of the leaving the water glasses all over the house. Mm -hmm. So at the end, that's what was gonna that anyway that it had significance in the end. Put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah. All right. So my number four, I'm gonna go with the 1987 Predator movie. Ah. So, so a much loved in the military community. Everybody. <laughs> Quote Arnold, get to the choppa, you know. But it's actually like, like the, like the, the predators are like, like incredibly clever, very smart, very, very significant. You know, they're good at what they do. They're very good hunters. And the entire like franchise of you know getting to alien versus predator and all the different you know spinoffs that they've done. Sure. But like predator movie, like the ability to cloak himself and his you know interesting targeting mechanisms and you know what he was like the way he. Like, just skinned these, you know, skin, and, and nobody knew what was going on. But then, you know, Arnold figures it out. He covered himself in mud and it's like, oh, he can't see me because I'm in camouflage. But so like, go back, like just kind of like that classic, like Arnold, Arnold was what he was, but in terms of like an action movie, taking like that science fiction spin of this, of an alien, like coming down and, and literally preying on human beings. Yeah. I love movie and my kids love the movie and, I, and I'm glad that you know it became a franchise and I'm glad that like I'm glad with everything they did with the franchise I loved it so yeah Predator number four. Oh, that's crazy I have never seen it 
I have <gasps> never seen Predator. I'm aware of the num- numerous sequels and and the spinoffs and all that. I think even Adrian Brody appeared in a in, in a sequel. Predator movie spinoff. Yes. But yeah, I I myself have never never seen it. One uh, of the great lines ever. I ain't got time to bleed. Oh, <laughs> that's it. That is a great line. Yes. It sounds like a great line. Yes. All right. My number three is probably pretty obvious, but it it is a movie that I don't always think about until we're having these kinds of conversations. So this is 1977's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is a C- Steven Spielberg's second or third movie second movie maybe coming off of the you know huge success that jaws was and now giving him some clout and some capital to make some of the projects that were you know personal to him yeah you know it starts out with is it francois truffaut (laughs) that's in the movie like one of spielberg's heroes is is in this film but you've got this you've got this married couple in Richard yeah. Dreyfus and Terry Gar. Yeah. And then you've got Melinda Dillon, a single mom, and her little boy Barry. And the connection that the that Richard Dreyfus and Melinda Dillon connect in this movie because they have seen, experienced these ships, these unidentified objects. Melinda Dillon's child was abducted if you will the the opening of the door and the lights and the wind and all of the things (laughs) and then you eventually get to the devil's tower and the mashed potatoes and everybody thinking Richard Dreyfuss has gone crazy but the the culmination the end of the movie they're you know now we have witnesses and there is a spaceship and Barry comes home, little boy, little blonde Barry comes home and and Richard gets, you know, he walks with the aliens and gets on the ship. And yeah, maybe that's a spoiler alert, but okay, whatever. Well, it's 77. If you haven't seen it by now, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. So I'm sorry. But yeah, so I I just think, you know, it's it's a very, it's a deep thinker movie, but it still has that aspect of like sentimentality and there's humor and it's it's just it's very well written and immaculately directed and even for 1977 it looked pretty pretty friggin' cool yeah. uh, they were at yeah, like yeah. the height of you know 70s special effects whatever sure. yeah it was a it, highly entertaining movie and and something that actually i think i think our father took me and mike to see this movie I think uh, I saw this in the theater and I think I saw it with our dad and our brother, if I'm, okay. if I remember correctly, but yeah, cool. anyway, that's my number three. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go in a different direction and it's kind of, odd, it's kind of an odd pick, um, but Hey, it is what it is. I'm going <laughs> to, my number three is a fun one and it, and it's probably on a lot of people's stinker list. So kiss my butt. Alrighty. All cool. Galaxy. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Galaxy Quest from 1999. Okay. Give me one second. Let me fix this. All right. Okay. Got it. So here we go. Galaxy Quest, 1999. So you got Tim Allen as basically kind of, you know, this William Shatner character, you know, right. sci-fi TV show star, Sigourney Weaver, you know, his his hot co-star. And they end up, you know, finding out that this alien species is actually like modeled their entire technology off of this TV show. So you got oh, wow. a, a very, very young Justin Long, adorable oh. in it. You got Tony Shalhoub, you know, kind of the, as this like aloof, like, I don't know, he was the, he was a character and he's just kind of like a, a, a goofball a, sidekick. Oh, Yeah. And, and you got Sam Rockwell as this, <laughs> he's the, you know, what was his character? Like the guy that dies. <laughs> I a, love <laughs> Sam Rockwell. <laughs> he's Guy. He's the guy that dies, right? Guy. But, uh, but, <laughs> but you have Alan Rickman and bless his heart, you know, he has one of the most endearing characters in this movie. And it's, it's, it's silly and it's stupid. It's, but it's an alien movie because this alien species, you know, has basically come to this this cast of TV characters for for all hope for all hope their like their entire existence depends oh, wow. on 
this TV cast being able to save their 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 species and their planet. Very <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's you know, but at the end of the day, Tim, you know, Tim Allen's character basically, you know, like these people were my family for for years and becomes a real life hero. So I, I really I love it. It's cheesy, but I really love it. It's well, it's an adorable 1999 Galaxy Quest. All right. Again, one that I have not seen. I, I am very familiar. Oops. You okay over there? Okay. That was your number three. Yes. Okay. My number two is a movie that probably very few people have ever heard of. I have only seen it once, but when I think about alien movies, this always pops in my head. And I watched this movie at a period of time when I was still early in my housing career. I was working at Webster University and I was taking classes with my students for a lot of the time. And the first class I ever took at Webster was called The Films of John Sayles. And that is where I was introduced to 1984's The Brother from Another Planet. Oh, I have heard of that. This movie stars Joe Morton who most people will remember as, what's the company in Terminator? I want to say Ditron, but I don't think that's right. The, the guy that was the creator of the, the Terminator arms and all that kind of stuff. So he was in that Skynet. movie. And he was also- it's Skynet. Skynet, <laughs> right. And right. he's also Olivia Pope's father in Scandal. But he he did this film with John Sayles. And then he actually became, he was in a lot of other John Sayles movies after that. Not to the same it. tune that David Strathairn was. But so this is a mute alien with the appearance of a black human. And he's chased by outer space bounty hunters through the streets of Harlem. And <laughs> there's just all kinds of funny and interesting things that are happening to this brother from another planet i remember it being highly entertaining and still like there are social justice lessons to be to be learned from this film and and it you know was part of what made my fascination with john sales at the time it, uh, such a big deal because he he was one of those renaissance he is one of those renaissance directors he writes he directs he stars in some stuff he produces his stuff Sometimes he might edit or he might write a little music. So he's kind of a, you know, in that vein of Robert Rodriguez, Clint Eastwood, those other Kevin Smith. Yeah. Kind of but yeah. So John Sayles is one of those super totally underrated filmmakers. And this is one of those super totally underrated social justice alien movies from the 80s. <laughs> okay. So there you go. That's my number two. Maybe the only. Probably so the true. only, right. I have not seen that, but it's on my list, and I do love because I mean he, the John John Morton Morton Joe Morton. In a, he's in he's in Terminator too. Uh, yes. One of my favorites from that. And so, he's yeah. also in Crossroads with yes. with the Karate yes. Kid. The Karate yes. Kid goes yes. to play the. When we do movies about like you know hell, we can bring up Crossroads later and movies about blues. Okay, my number two. Yeah. So I was kind of going back and forth on this. I'm actually going to go with A Quiet Place. So it came out and I got I'm I'm trying to juggle multiple dogs in in a in a house, like right now. So um, Is that the directorial debut of John Krasinski? John Krasinski, yeah. So All right. 2018. So one of the things not only is he like fantastic, but Emily Blunt, you know, his pregnant wife with mm -hmm. their daughter who is deaf. And it's all about, you know, they have to, the only thing that these, the way the aliens can attack them is through sound. So they have to be absolutely 100% silent. So she's fantastic. Like, you know, the survival of like, can you imagine having to give birth and be absolutely silent? Like, no, just, but, but I'm not going to tell you how, how it goes, yeah. but in the sequel yet, but I think just in terms of like suspense and like protecting a family and so this is this is the first on my list of like 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 really really like apocalyptic aliens like yeah. predator is he was attacking people but not like he wasn't going to destroy the planet this was like apocalyptic you know alien infestation of this planet right yeah yeah good stuff i have not seen that so either it was, it, you'll you'll love it but i do remember I remember Emily 
Blunt getting nominated for the SAG Award and actually winning it. So it was one of those like, this performance is now trumping everything else that's supposed to happen at the Oscars, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I do, I do like her a lot. She's really multifaceted and can do a lot of, a lot of good, great things. Yes. I not do, as I familiar with John Krasinski's work, but for some reason, I think I just like him to like him. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> like if, if, like if you've seen one episode of The Office with him in it, you will be in love with him from, okay. for, the, for the rest of your life. Sounds like, good. I, but then also you can, you can see both of them do the lip sync battle, like on different episodes. And oh, both that's just- right. I have seen him do an in sync lip sync battle performance. Yeah. They're, they're both like super fun. And anyway, but so yeah, my number two, A Quiet Place, 2018. Awesome. God, 2018. I it know. Seem like that far long ago, but then again, yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have an honorable mention? How about you do your honorable mention while I let my other dog inside the house and okay. then I'll give you an honorable mention. All right. So I'm going with the movie from 2009 called District Nine. And oh. I recall seeing this in the theater. I've only seen it once. So this takes place in Johannesburg, South Africa. And there is a refugee camp where these aliens were located from a starship that arrived in the 80s. And mm. the initial welcome from the humans failed. So now you've got all these aliens and they've been put into a militarized ghetto known as District 9, where they're confined and exploited in squalor. And then there's a fella, his name is Wykus Van Der Muir, <laughs> played yeah. by, I think his name is Char- Charlita, Char- Charlotte Copley. Okay. And he gets exposed to alien chemical stuff and he has to, he has to, figure out his survival by getting along with the aliens who have been, you know, thrown into this militarized ghetto. So again, you've got some social justice coolness going on, but this just really odd South African story and this Charlotte Copley kind of like just comes on the movie scene in this indie world. And he kind of, I don't know, he was kind of like an it guy for a while. Yeah. But yeah, it's entertaining and and a little depressing and and sad. But it's as far as alien movies go, like why not? It's yeah, it's different. All right, I haven't seen that yet, so I'm glad that we had movies that, on each other's list that like well, we I haven't know. seen so. the watch list. So my honorable mention should should probably have been like on my list, but kind of as as partially cult classic. But the thing from 1982. Oh, you know, God bless John Carpenter for making a what a great movie. And it, you know, it's a remake in itself. And then I think yeah. they did a remake of it. So I'm like, no, if it doesn't have Kurt Russell, why would you bother? Exactly. Um, yeah. So absolutely, you know, when you when you go back and watch it and like trying to figure out whether or not the, the alien is embodied another of the of the like surviving crew of this yeah. like, polar expedition, whatever it is that they're doing. <laughs> I have to go need to watch it like again I watched it with the kids like five years ago and and it's still like you you just can't beat Kurt Russell pretty much in anything he does but you know when you slap some some good sci-fi action with you don't know if you have to kill somebody because he might be embodied by an alien he might indeed be embodied by alien yeah it's it's a little bit invasion of the body snatchers but not quite but enough to be like that's a pretty good alien movie I love it it's cult classic it's Kurt Russell how can you go wrong it's kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets, remember that Denzel Washington movie, Fallen, where the serial killer oh, spirit ooh. kind of jumps yeah. between people? Kind of like uh, kind of like that. Yeah. Only, only that movie came out much later than The Thing. Yeah. But if you had to describe it to somebody. That's a good, like, you know, parallel. I like that. Strangely, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I like that movie a lot. And, and that was a, that was a, younger but not super young kurt russell in his whole like which came first escape from new york or escape from la in those days oh. big trouble little china yeah those those years oh. <laughs> i don't know why i can never remember that i'm there with kurt russell yes yes because he, he's not a darling but i freaking love the characters he chooses to play yes 
Yes. And that, that is the reason why I have to finish the hateful eight because I, st I still haven't, haven't finished it. It's All right. my, well, I can't say it's my least second, least favorite Quentin movie. Cause I haven't finished it yet, but nonetheless, we'll get there. Okay. My number right. one number now one. suddenly feels very obvious to me, yeah. but what, what I also appreciate about this week's episode is that we've had zero crossover. Yes, but I have a feeling that we're going to cross over on our number one. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going with 1979's Alien. Okay. The Ridley Scott, Sigourney Weaver, Ian Holm, Yafit Koto, John Hurt, Tom Skerritt. Skerritt. For, for me, that movie, I feel like that was the movie that started it all. And it may not have been, but... I, I don't know. And maybe it's because the title of the movie is Alien. So, it, you know, pops in my head. But I, I can that movie will never die for me. Yeah, I, I find everything happening in that film so fascinating. And just the the story it set up, you know, for all of the, the extra sequels and and, it you know, it gave Sigourney Weaver a a primal signature character. Can rip yeah. And yeah, and the alien is pretty friggin' scary and creepy. And or, I mean, I don't know, it's just her her tenacity and her courage and having to go it alone at the end. Yeah, it it yeah, that movie will never die for me. It it, it I it is highly entertaining and I love it. Love 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 right. it. Yeah. So so I, I'll tell you what I had my tie for my number one as alien slash aliens, but I tell you what, since alien was yours, I'll make alien because I saw aliens in the theater in 1986. I saw it first before I saw the 1979 yeah. movie. So, so aliens is going to be my number one. And it's so funny because, you know, a, they kept the, they kept the integrity of the character, you know, of Ripley the same. Yeah. And her of the Android with Ian Holm, you know, his meltdown. And then like Lance Henriksen comes in as Bishop and freaking, you know, is the hero, it, yep. you know, is the last thing that helped her, you know, in the end. And of course, my, my, my favorite, you know, I got my Michael Bain back in there as, as Hicks. Yeah. And Bill Paxton. <laughs> and, you know, Bill Paxton, like, why don't you put her in charge? Like, that's like a, like aliens, like movie lines in this house are like a, like a everyday occurrence. God bless Hudson. I, I freaking, you know, God rest his soul, Bill Paxton. I love him in that movie. But so getting back to Sigourney Weaver, the aliens, she like, she embodies like, the, like no makeup, you know, the, the, the wardrobes, a white t-shirt and some freaking, you know, fatigue pants. And yeah. she goes, and she, not only is she like such a badass, but without, you know, but still feminine and still beautiful and, yes. and just like in, in, in being who she is um, and saving this little girl. Yes. This, this little, this mm -hmm. little bad girl, which I love it. She like, you know, Ripley's yelling at the Marines. Like this little girl survived for, for like months and you can't make it through one day. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a I, little affirmative yeah. <laughs> little words that she would pick up when, you know, Ripley becomes her protector so, and her maternal figure. Yeah. So I love the, I love the entire alien predator franchise that would not have happened had I not seen aliens in the movie theater, in, like really kind of the first scare, like scary movie. Cause yeah. it's crap out of me. You know, there's some jump scare shit going on there. Yeah. But so yeah, number one, 1986 aliens. Good, good choices across the board. Yeah. Yeah, that's some, you know, I, Paul Reiser is such a bastard in that movie. And I have to remind myself like, oh, he's the funny buddy in Beverly Hills Cop. This is not my office. And then he goes on to do this incredible work with Helen Hunt on Mad About You for yeah. years. And then isn't he the dad in Whiplash? He's Miles Teller's dad in, in Whiplash, yeah. isn't he? What? And oh yeah, by the way, shows up in Stranger Things and is like a freaking awesome. Well, you think he's an asshole and then he's an awesome and then he's an asshole, but then he's awesome again. You don't know. So I won't say, because if you haven't seen Stranger Things, shame on you. Yeah. But I have some catching up to do there, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I hate Paul Reiser so much in this film and oh, yeah. uh, anyway, okay, let's recap. Okay. My honorable mention, the thing. So from five to one, the abyss. 
Predator 1987, Galaxy Quest 99, got to have a little bit of comic relief in there. Number two, A Quiet Place from 2018. And number one, Aliens from 1986. God bless you, Ripley. Yes. Okay. Honorable mention was District 9, straight out of South Africa. And then five to one is Starman, Signs, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, The Brother from Another Planet, and Alien, as in No S, 1979. I love it. And we had no repeats, and we had no crossover, and we had movies that each of us haven't seen. And that is a very rare episode here on the Top 5 Podcast. Yeah. Good, good times. Okay, so at the time you're listening to this episode, Annie and I will likely be coming off of a oscar series that we'll be producing in time for the oscars so yeah. you have that to look forward to next week yeah so for ms pruitt i am Ms. McPeak, and you have been listening to the top five podcast we appreciate you downloading another week's episode and we will catch you on the flip side